afternoon. My name is Annette Mompia, and you are watching the WS News. Air Beach posted a memorial on Remembrance Day. The event was commissioned by film director Danny Boyle. He commemorated the fallen soldier in a new, modern way. A reporter, Alex Doherty, has more. Air Beach was transformed into a canvas Remembrance Sunday to commemorate those who lost their lives during the First World War. It featured an image of Walter Till. And quite a few folk about it brought quite a lot of people down to the area because they, they're a lot busier on Sunday morning than what they normally is. I think they were quite excited about it and they were looking forward to going down. Some of them were just popping in just to get a coffee to take down and yeah, they were looking, looking forward to it. Because it was for a black man to be recruited, like, I, think it, I think it's the British Army was the first black man. It's very impressive, I think it's fantastic for everybody to see. It's lovely the photographs to see all the wee dots of people round about and then the big huge portraits. Fantastic way to, to remember. Yeah, that was a pretty special thing because I yeah. think it should remain special and you know, be a one off for the memory of the soldiers and all. It keeps the, the children interested, it keeps maybe the older people interested. We don't want anybody to forget what happened. Like that, it's a big thing that I I'm a, a coin and medal dealer, dealing military medals. I thought it was fantastic. I liked the way it was all washed away and it was as if it was taking the people away sort of thing. Mm -hmm. and, but you've seen them again just for that brief period. I thought it was brilliant, yeah. Especially for the youngsters who don't really understand war. I think we've got to make it a wee bit interactive. I think there should be more art on the beach. If you go abroad, you go to Spain and all that, there's all these sand sculptures. I know the weather's different. Go to places like Benidorm and all that, there's people doing all these art sculptures all day and they're actually fantastic. Thanks, Harry. Today is Purple Tuesday, the UK's first accessible shopping day. Purple Tuesday promotes an inclusive shopping experience to improve the disabled customer experience. Purple Tuesday is an, an initiative aimed at providing people who are with disabilities to have a better shopping experience and to give consumers a, a better understanding of the needs of people who have disabilities. And when we renovated the shop into a restaurant, we thought really carefully about disabled access. So when you come in the door, experience supporting people over the years and I think previously um, there was a lot of folk who perhaps didn't go out and about and do things where now people are active and out and about shopping all the time and our experience of supporting folk has been that the general public are generally friendly and kind and understanding, recognising that the disabled community is a big consumer and that they've got cash to spend is something for retailers to be aware of as well, so um, I'm thinking that, that Purple Tuesday is a great idea. Jamie Costello, reporting for UWS News Air. As obesity continues to grow in the UK, Action on Sugar is trying to raise awareness on takeout food. A reporter, Esther Tanay, is in air to get the locals' opinion. Um, I eat out probably maybe once a week. Uh, I think I eat about out about once every two weeks. But I would say probably a maximum of once a week. Yeah, I eat out approximately three times a month. It's Sugar Awareness Week and the theme this year is eating out. According to Action on Sugar, more than a quarter of adults eat out at least once a week. UWS spoke to Catherine on her neck to see if these figures were accurate. Yeah, well, I would say that 75% of our customers are regular during the course of the week. I think everybody should be personally responsible for their own health and well-being. Action on Sugar are campaigning to have cleaner nutrition labelling in cafes and restaurants. They spoke to the public to find out if they think it's necessary. Well, personally, I don't really care. I wouldn't look at it, so I don't think so. However, some people think it's a good idea. I guess it's handy for people, 
about uh, Lodge and that kind of stuff, but it doesn't really affect me. Yes, I think it's a good thing. I think it does make you quite often look twice. I think restaurants should display like nutritional values on the menus because that way people are probably more likely to go out then um, if they are on a diet because they can see what they're kind of getting and they know what is being served. As the time I need the restaurant. Moving on to our local sport headline. The FSA sold the Scottish Cup TV rights to BBC Scotland and Premier Sport for £20 million. Pounds. Our reporter, George Connolly, spoke to football commentator Robert, Robert McLean about this game changing deal. The Scottish Football Association have just agreed a new deal which will see Scottish Cup games shown on Premier Sports as well as the BBC starting from season 2019 20. Commentator Rob McLean thinks the cut will gain a wider audience from the New Deal. Yeah, I think more money into Scottish football uh, has got to be beneficial. Um, I'm presuming this is a, a better deal than the one that went before it. It's a bit of a surprise to, to find out the Sky aren't involved anymore, but it may be that they are putting all their money together to try to buy the league football. So I think the, Scot the Scottish Cup is going to get uh, a lot better coverage, a lot more extensive coverage now. McLean also believes fans will acknowledge the fact that they'll have to pay for the new channel. I think us Scottish football fans have got to accept that we pay for football one way, one way or another. Um, we either it's by going to the games and paying the charges to, to get in or you have to pay to watch it, and even if you're watching on the BBC, you're paying a licence fee. And what we're doing by paying to watch football is we're investing in the game. Some think that the deal is not good value for fans. I think it's a rip off because if you're already paying to watch football on like Sky Sports or BT, or you know, if you're already going to the games. I think from a fan's perspective, it's quite poor, you know I mean? Fans already have to pay for BT, for Sky. I mean, Sky's coverage isn't even that great and they're still going to pay for it. And then they've got to now pay for Premier Sports as well. I think it's just a lot of money out of a fan's pocket. This has been George Connolly reporting for UWS Sports News. Thanks for that, George. This weekend, we'll see Chris Boyd honoured by Kilmarnock Football Club. Our reporter, Lewis Walker, tell us more about this final special game. Chris Boyd's testimonial match is set to take place here at Rugby Park on Saturday. Boyd, the all-time leading goal scorer in Scottish football, is set to be rewarded for his services to come on at Football Club. We spoke to stadium announcer Gavin Wallace ahead of the game. All-time leading SPFL, SPL goal scorer. Uh, I think that shows just how important he has been for, for Kelly over the years. The goals that he's scored for us have literally have been match winners. They've kept us you know, up, they've kept us in top six positions. They've kept us away from relegation battles in the past as well. And he's a local lad as well, he's from Ayrshire. Um, and he knows exactly what Kilmarnock means to the fans, what Kilmarnock means to the community. We also spoke to a fan who shared his thoughts on what Chris Boyd has done for Kilmarnock Football Club. Uh, Chris is, he will go down as a legend for Kilmarnock. He, um, especially in the last couple of seasons, he's dug us at a few holes. Last season he was, he was one of the most important players for the club. Gavin also spoke about the former players that will be returning to Rugby Park for the match. El Capitan, eh, Manuel Piscali will be coming by. I think everyone's looking forward to that, of course, eh, in the side we, we won the League Cup in 2012. So that's going to be huge. Player like him coming back. Lossa is coming back as well, of course. Eremenko. Um, that is also going to be fantastic. It's going to be really good to capture you know, what it was then as well, and now and with Chris and the team as well. Having then spoke about what Boyd plans to do with the money raised from the game. The year after speaking to, to Chris, the, uh, Chris's idea is to split the money up uh, for charities of his choice. More details about the match can be found on the Twitter page at Boyd the Official. Thanks for that, Lewis. That's all for today. I'm Anne Pompilla. Have a good evening.